Lee Man, finally, I have to have to ask you to come off that fence. Let's have a prediction for Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury for the WBC heavyweight title. What's your final shout? Well, here we are for this special edition of the G-Man Talks Boxing. Yep. And we are in the heart of the hullabaloo in Camden Town at the wonderful Good Fair Italian Cafe. Of course, we've been coming here for years, Gary. I love it. And it's one of the originals, isn't it? I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. If you talk about pastas and you talk about pizzas, this is the place. This is London top place. It is just great. We had yeah. fantastic pizzas that were freshly made, home cooked, and you really can't get that many other places. Ready so to go. We're ready, ready to, to go. go. Ready to go. Okay, so obviously we're going to start off with the super middleweights, although with Canelo, you don't really want to brand him as well, a... What is he? What light is heavy? Or super middle? What is he? Well, he's, um, you know, he just dances up and down those weight divisions and you don't really know what he is. But the thing is, it has been rumoured that both Callum Smith and possibly Billy Joe Saunders have rejected fights and Oscar De La Hoya is going into one, mm. accusing them and calling them not really being proper fighters. Mm. Um, but we don't know what Oscar De La Hoya was offering them. Well, That's the thing. What's it, your take on it then? Well, it, the truth is in the details. Yep. <laughs> we don't get the details. We're waiting for the details. That's the thing. Mm. Well, he's, he's fought Liam Smith and he's fought uh, Rocky Fielding. Yeah. He, he's had plenty of British opposition. Yeah. But forgetting all the personal aside, um, how, how do you, how's your, what's your take on Callum Smith? Oh, well, let's forget about Callum Smith because he's definitely turned it down. Mm. Saunders might still do it. Mm. So what's your take on a Saunders fight against Canelo? I think it's an attractive fight. I think it's a very attractive fight. I like Saunders. Uh, you know, since the days of Eubanks and all of that, he's grown and he's attractive. I think it's a good, a good thing. I'd like to see him out there. Billy Joe Saunders an attractive fighter, period, or this is just an attractive fight versus Canelo? No, this is an attractive fight because this is going to bring the best out of uh, Billy Joe. Saunders could dig a, you know, dive here and dive there. He ain't got a lot of power, uh, you know, he, and he hasn't got enough, enough tricks to really uh, worry Canelo too much. But pigs can fly. Well, Pierce can fly, um, and Saunders has always talked a very, very good game. That's good. He's occasionally delivered, mm. such against that Canadian, he put on a good show there. But as you say, possibly lacks power, mm. um, should have finished that guy off. Sure. Um, Lemieux. Sure. Um, didn't. No. However, you know, he has a, an arsenal of tricks, and he might just cause problems for five rounds, possibly. <laughs> Let's put this in perspective. <laughs> Canelan is not Lemieux. Canelo's not the mirror, no. That's for sure. No. That's for sure. I do feel, as the season's wound on, that I, I don't think this boxing season yet, we're now in February, it's not quite kicked off. No. It, no. It's been the slowest burning boxing season. It's really not just tricky. It hasn't, you know, there's been not been that series of fights that's kick started it, has there? We need some exciting fight about. There's no exciting fights. What's coming up now is exciting. Right, so. Let's just talk about the heavyweights just for a second. Mm. Um, now, they, they reckon that Derek Chisora could be lined up to fight Usyk, who's only had one fight against 38-year-old Chaz Witherspoon mm. in the heavyweight division. Mm. I mean, he's a big guy, uh, mm. a Usyk. He's six foot three. Mm. There's no problems there. Mm. Um, do you think Derek will give Usyk some problems? Very much so. Derek, is a, Derek can be a nightmare. You know, Derek can be a nightmare. I don't really think it's a good fight. For you sick, not to, as a promotional fight, I think they should go back down to a few more Witherspoons and go to Marks and Spencers and Tesco before they go to Shadow Shadow Briggs said Tesco or Sainsbury's. Yeah, yeah. So it's a fight yeah. too soon for you, sir. Oh, definitely. Derek, you know, Derek can be a nightmare for, for, for anybody. Anybody. Let's talk about a domestic heavyweight fight that's just been announced. Yes. Of course. Yeah. It's uh, Daniel Dubois. Wow. 14 and 0. You hear the he name? He holds about six titles Dubois. or seven titles. You would not believe that a person with a name like that can be so ruthless. He has become a ruthless, chilling, killing machine. For sure. He? For sure. I mean, this is interesting because Joyce, there's no joy in Joyce, is there? There's no joy in Joyce. However, you have to remember, he was a silver medalist at the Olympics. He mm -hmm. should have won it. He, you know, he, he probably got robbed. Mm. Um, he's done everything right as a professional, except mm. for change trainers every five seconds. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's either will Daniel be too powerful 
and too skilled for Joyce, too young, mm. or will Joyce old man Daniel mm. out of there and hustle his way to a point score? Mm, boy, if you don't win something in, in, your, in the early 20s, in your late 30s, it, it's not a winning situation. I think that Daniel, for what he is, who I tip to the, to the next world champion, and I say that without any reservation, because he's an attractive. Why do you think people are going to buy tickets to see this fight? Because they know somebody is going to be Van Gogh. Somebody is hitting the canvas. Somebody's definitely going to hit the canvas. For sure. And your money's on Joyce hitting the canvas. For sure. All my money. I mean, not a lot, but all my money. Now, this thing about changing trainers, of course, um, Joyce seems to train trainers regularly. Tyson Fury ditched Ben Davison mm. and has gone to Emmanuel Stewart's mm. nephew, mm. the late Emmanuel Stewart, who, of course, we knew. Let's look at that fight ahead just for a second. There's an awful, it's kind of like that fight, it's the calm before the storm. I've never seen two such entertainers. The way they sold that fight last time, they've been damn quiet this time around. <laughs> and I don't know what that spells for the Whoa, fight. Whoa, you know, the thing about it is that the date is over. They both had that colorful. They both know each other. And who improves win this fight? Who improves? There's no question that Deontay Wilder has definitely improved as a heavyweight since that fight with, with Fury. He made short work of, of Brazil, um, and really short work. And of course, um, whilst we can say that Ortiz was winning the fight, at the end of the day, he got knocked out and properly knocked out. You know, I don't, so, bu I don't buy into this part about winning, winning fights. I believe in the conclusion of the fight. Not the bit. Everybody's winning the fight at the beginning. It's the conclusion that's the most important thing. This is the reason why you've got a left hand, you've got a right hand. In some fights, you're using your left hand, using your left hand, and to the right time comes to use your right hand. Now, this is what I want to see Fury do. I want to see Fury use his size. His size. He's a bigger man. I want to see him use his size when the right time comes. Is that, that why is he's, he's put on weight for this fight, but good weight, yeah. not Andy Ruiz's weight. <laughs> he's put on good weight. <laughs> right? So with a new trainer that says to me that he's probably going to square up to wilder a little bit he did last time to be fair but this time maybe with a little bit more power in his shots with the extra weight you know i looked at this fight about six or seven times what the one with wilder and looking at this fight it's very difficult to pick a winner from this fight because i've never seen a man who's been knocked down got up legs not shaking coherent and go on and win that round. That is something needs to be talked about in that situation. I'm not quite happy. A lot of people are talking about this and talking about that, but from a visual point of view, a man is on the floor, his leg, one leg is up in the air, it tells me he's not knocked out. It tells me that Fury has to overcome a psychologicalness in his mind about being hit by Wilder. When he gets hit by Wilder, he panicked and he went down. So what I'm questioning, I'm questioning Wilder's power. Because Fury wasn't hurt. Exactly. Because he got up and his legs weren't shaking. Exactly. It's a shock down. And the shock down comes from a mental situation. You panic in the situation. The next thing is, is that Wilder improves on his attack. Because Fury slips that right hand and if Wilder can take it to another level, we got a problem. Okay. Let's move into the fight. We're in a championship rounds, as they call them, 9 to 12. Yeah. Um, it's a hard fight for both of them. They've both been in a little bit of trouble. Possibly Fury on the deck, but got up. Yeah. Going into the last stretch of the fight, can I ask you to make a prediction whose hand is going up at the end of that contest by stoppage if or by points? Fury, this fight is all about who improves. It's all about who improves. We know Fury can dig deep. The thing We've is with Fury, that. the thing is with Fury, he has been quite active because yeah. after the last Wilder fight, he had two pretty hard fights. The second one definitely hard against Otto Wallin, and he got hurt. He had a little bit of wrestling to get the ring rust off as well, which I think probably helped. So he's he's not rusty, is he? No, he's far from rusty. The thing about rustiness is that they're both is coming in and they peak, very much peak. This fight is who wants it, who down to who wants it. Who's, this fight is down to who has improved from the previous fight. Believe you me, Wilder's coming to this fight. He's been quiet, but he's coming in there 
and he's feeling very conscientious, very he's coming in there and he said, you know what? I'm coming to win this. G Man, finally I have to have to ask you to come off that fence. Let's have a prediction for Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury for the WBC heavyweight title. What's your final shout? You know, like I said, this fight comes down to who has improved. And I don't believe a puncher or a man who thinks he's a puncher is going to improve. I think a boxer, like someone like Fury, I think he can improve. So for that, money on Fury. Money on Fury. And this is the very, very last question. Do you think that this fight will kickstart what's been a slow burner of a boxing season so far? Oh, definitely. Not only is Fury going to win this fight, he's going to fight. He's going to win this fight by stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to our, our cameraman, uh, Mohammed. Thank you to uh, the Good Fair Italian restaurant in Camden. Thank you, of course, to the G-Man himself. Watch out for our show. We'll be putting details up for the next shows on a more regular basis. G-Man Talks Boxing. Thank you. One more pizza. Ha <laughs> ha.